Welcome back. Ready to sim again. See what we can do in season four of this latest Big Cotter franchise. 18th in power before the year starts. That is unacceptable. Who can I juice up? Wang's got a shit ton of power already. Give Holthy a little more power. How about... We already boosted Joel's power last year. Give Tyson a little more pop at the top of the lineup. Give Farmer a little more fucking power and see if that actually makes him fucking hit the baseball. Alright. 16th. Whatever. Anyway. Running it back, obviously, with our same faces. Mike Farmer, we better see some fucking hitting from you this year. Uh, here's the lineup against the lefties. Not much changed other than Joel just moves down a little bit since his attributes against lefties are pretty dog. Pitching rotation, running it back. Owen Van Ness better not fucking suck this year. 390 plus pitchers. Terry takes over number two from Rourke as he passes him up in overall. Young men back to the long relief role. I put the shittiest relievers in setup because the game uses the setup guys the least for no reason. And that's basically it. Still the reigning NL Central champ. Sam won a World Series two seasons ago. And let's do it again. Let's sim to draft day. Fuck you, game. I don't want 43 players on my 40 men. Who added these losers, bro? I want to fucking remove these guys from the 40 men. How the hell? Oh my god. I can't remove these guys from the 40 man roster? What the fuck is going on here? Can this guy get removed? Fuck off! This might be a problem. Yeah, this could be a bit of an issue. We'll see what the game does to fix itself. It's gonna. Is it gonna fucking DFA like actual players? All right, let me stop. Wow, first off, what the fuck, man? Nice showing offense. Three hits on opening day. Fucking wasted a Tosk gem. Kill yourself. What do they do with the 40-man roster? I'm a little concerned here. What are these fuckers doing on the fucking team? Why is he on the fucking team? Okay. Well, I, I don't think he's actually on the team. He's probably on waivers. Let's go to draft day. Cool. Nick Senzel didn't get claimed. Hunter Green didn't get claimed. Somehow no one claimed those guys. We're 0-4, by the way. Just so everyone is, is clear. We're 0-5 now. And then we feast the Pirates. Okay. Well, nothing like a get-me-right series against the Pirates. But we're under 500 through 22 games. Start winning some games, please. Start winning some games, please. Start winning some games. Why are you losing 14-1 to the Rockies? Why are you 500 on the year? Please sweep the Cubs. No, you're going to split against that shit team. What the hell is going on? Simulate the draft and simulate. go to All-Star Week. I'll sign the stupid-ass draft pick so that we have minor leaguers. Wow, they actually drafted a good player. Too bad I'll never see the MLB. All 
I'll start week we go. Finally above 500. Little night, little streak. Swept the Marlins. Two or three against the Brewers. Sweep the Yankees. Aaron Null. Gee, how much help do the Dodgers need? How much help do the Dodgers need? We're probably going to play him again in the playoffs. They signed Nico Horner in the offseason and Austin Hayes. They just are loaded. Why did you not sim the last game? Okay. We are at the All-Star break. Any big Cotter home run derby participants? No. 55-42. and 42. Nice little turnaround. We were under 500 for a while there. But at the All-Star break, we lead the division by two and a half games. Love to see that. Why is our defense and speed so shit? I don't know. But let's check some first half stats and see how the team did. Let me check the chat first. Why is there a Colin Kaepernick notification coming on my phone? No one cares. All right. First half of the year, Andrew Tyson. Oh, my goodness, was he awesome this is my leadoff hitter 14 steals don't know why he's getting caught six times in the first half of the year but uh 13 bombs 19 doubles doesn't strike out ever 321 average 389 515 904 no errors out there in center field on pace for like nine wins unbelievable year for tyson at the top of the order lang 99 overall pretty solid want more though 13 homers for Lang in 89 games is not what you want to see where did his power go need some more pop from Lang 99 overall he has like 88 he lost six power against left because he was so he, he didn't homer that that really sucks Lang Wallace Coming off such a good year. It's been pretty good, but numbers way down in pretty much every sense. Still overall, even though they're down, still overall a very good year, but Wallace can do better. Holvey, have a season, Sam Holvey. Everyone on the damn team has 13 homers. Okay, but Holvey, 927 OPS, 324, 411 on base, a gold glove defender at third, 4.0 wins above replacement, walking nearly as much as he's striking out. Awesome year. Joel Salen, another 300-plus hitter in the first half, and bo he barely escaped the 13 homer allegations with his 14th homer. 315, 384, 513, 897 OPS. Team leading. 4.4 wins above replacement. Actually, I think Tyson might add a few, a little bit more. And here's the guy who always sucks. And this year he sucks again. OPS under 700, five homers for an 89 overall second baseman, and a 695 OPS, four errors at second base. On pace to have his highest war since season one. Also, I put season four on the title of this stream and it's really season five, so I'm just a fucking loser. Strikes out a fuck ton. Mike Farmer sucks. I mean, there's no other way to say it. Dade Pitchford, not very good at all. I mean, this, this is a shit year for Pitchford. Troy Williams at the catcher spot. Catchers don't usually give you much offense, and Troy Williams is not dispelling that. Still worth 1.7 more, but shit offensive numbers. Kennedy in the DH spot against right. He's pretty damn good. I'll take those numbers from our nine-hole hitter. I'll take those numbers all day long. Hawkins, is he doing any better than some of these starters? Not really. 664 OPS, five bombs. Jordan Elliott, 124 at-bats. Another sub-700 OPS bat. Theo Coley has 34 at-bats and is 3 for 34 with a homer and a triple. 
Safe to say he won't be starting. Austin Cotter, 63 at bats. Complete dog shit. So the offense has some really, really good years, but also some really horseshit years. So kind of a mixed bag on offense. Pitching staff, Tosk, really solid stuff. Nothing amazing. I really wish I could get back to my 2023 form. 195 ERA over 33 starts. Really wish, but we'll settle for a 320 ERA. Greg Terry, heck of a first half. 345 ERA, 109 whip. Connor Rourke, what the fuck is this dude's problem? 91 overall, and he's going to put up 452 and 423 ERAs in back to back years. Dude blows. Oh my God. Owen Van Ness is just, I mean, I've given up all hope on him. He sucks. He straight up sucks ass. There's no saving it. He's our only lefty in the rotation, and he sucks. And Rydell is quietly just, like, really consistently solid. I mean, three out of these five years have been, like, really good. Another good first half for him. Jack Youngman in the bullpen, 302 ERA. He is so consistent in this long relief spot of being really, really good. I mean, tip your cap to him. Maybe he shouldn't choke in the playoffs, but, like, the whole bullpen does, so, like, not going to hold it against them. Harper Jr., 52 and two-thirds innings of really good baseball, 58 Ks. Max Marcus, 38 dominant innings so far. Maybe I shouldn't say dominant, but pretty freaking awesome. Walking quite a few guys, but he's working around it. Ben Keefe, great year, but this guy won't be seeing the mound in the postseason. We all know what, what happens when that happens. Shits his pants. Nate Reed, back-to-back -back shit years for him. Matt Welsh in 13 innings. Not awful. Could be a lot worse for Welsh. He's striking out a guy per inning he pitches. I mean, tip your cap to him. Matt Welsh, 13 decent innings. Michael Handel, 11 shutdown innings so far for him. We're going to switch him and Nate Reed. To hope that he gets some more innings. And then Kieran Tawari, very good in the closer spot. 30 saves to four blown, 291 ERA, 41 Ks, and 31 in, 34 innings. The pitching staff as a whole, pretty good. Pretty good. Bullpen having a really good year collectively. Now, we know in the postseason, I don't know if that's going to last. Cotter should have a pretty fair amount of all-stars. I mean, at least three hitters should be all-stars in Hull v. Salen and, uh, and uh, Tyson, in my opinion. We'll see if any pitchers made it as well. A couple bullpen arms could be. As Kieran Tawari is an all-star for the second straight season and probably like the fourth time. And offensively, Tim Wallace makes it, even in a kind of down year. Starting right fielder. And they gave Holvey the nod and Tyson the nod. Tyson, Holvey, and Wallace and Tawari are four big Cotter All-Stars, and they absolutely snubbed Joel Salen big time. But it's okay. It's okay. We'll just win a World Series. No biggie. Let's keep simming. Let's sim to September call-ups and win another division. AL defeated the NL. Boo-hoo. I'm so sad, man. Ed, did Edwin Diaz just get traded to the tri, to their AAA team? What, did, what in the world just happened? Or did the Tigers change their logo? What am I looking at right now? Some dumbass logo just popped up and said Edwin Diaz has been traded. Did Ed, is Edwin Diaz so ass that they're like, we're trading for you and then sending you down to AAA because you suck? Who would trade two 22-year-olds for a 638 ERA pitcher? I am so confused. Tyrone Taylor to the Astros. That really helps the Cotters as the Brewers are sellers at the deadline, even though they're in second place, although... They sold two old shits. Or they they, they acquired two old shits who will probably play. Christian Arroyo to the Tigers. He's hitting 158. So great job giving up three sub-25-year-olds for a guy hitting 158 at the All-Star break with three homers. This game is quite interesting. 
see if there's any more trades. I would not like to stop simulating. Jonathan Lewiziga to the Tigers. Did they just they acquired Arroyo too? This is actually a good trade because he's actually dominating. Unlike your last trade, as the deadline passes. All right, 79 and 58 heading into September. Good for a three game lead on the Brewers. No one else really in contention. It'll be a big Cotters Brewers division race. Do we play them? We play them right now. I'm not, I don't feel like hopping in for this first series. We'll hop in for the last series of the year if, it, if the division race is still close. I just kind of want to get to the playoffs again, so I'm not going to bother with these three. First, we got to call up two guys. Hunter Green, welcome to the team. <laughs> Dude's rotting in AAA as an 85 overall just because we won't call him up and we'll instead roster Matt Welsh. All right, we'll sim through this Brewer. We'll sim this Brewer series game by game, big series. Rourke, Plesac, Plesac having a good year. Rourke, not so much. Don't care. Two one big Cotter win. That is massive. Rourke must have thrown a gem, but Youngman gets the win in relief. Van S. Montas, who the Brewers somehow have, seven four loss. Big rubber match here. Rydell, Ethan Small. Big Cotters win, five game lead, four game lead on the division. And we'll sim to right here and hope that we can lock away the division. 16 3 loss to the D backs. That's unserious, Big Cotters. That's just unserious. Two losses to the Nationals. Are we being serious now? A sweep by the Nationals heading into the final series of the season. Please tell me we've locked the division away 90 and 69. We haven't. One game lead on the division heading into the final series of the year. Wild card standings. One back. The Brewers are one back, which means we are tied with the Braves right now for the second wild card spot while also leading the division. It is going to come down to these last three games, and we're going to hop in for them. Rydell and Small is the first matchup. We are quick managing these games. Our playoff lives sit at stake here. We're not rusting anybody. Has Farmer picked up his fucking second half? That's actually not, like, horrendous. Okay. Has Pitchford picked it up? Mm, a little bit. 330 OBP you can live with from one of your starters. Hawkins? Not bad. Okay, we've had some improvement. We've had some improvement. Has Lang hit some more homers? 16 homers in the last two months for Lang. He had 13 at the break. A lot of improvement. Love to see that. We do not give a fuck that Dio Coley doesn't want to sit on the bench. Dude's hitting like .4. Yeah, we let the Brewers stick around because we can't beat the fucking Nationals, bro. Cotters. Cotters take a two-game lead with two to play. If they win today, Brewers even up the division race with two to play if they win today. Rydell versus Small is your pitching matchup. Cotters get home field for this final series. Great year from Rydell as the fifth starter. Here we go. And he hits Robles to start it. Bases loaded, one down for Luke. I always get it mixed up because there's Nate Lau and Brandon Lowe. I think is I think it's Lowe, not Lau. Maybe it's Lau. I don't know. Fielder's choice out at the plate. And then a strikeout. Nice work by Rydell there. Tyson walks. Let's see if he swipes second. Yes, sir. 
Lang walks. Base hit Wallace. They're loaded with nobody out. Fielder's choice out at the plate. Farmer finally comes through. 1-0 Cotters. Pitchford walks in a run. 2-0 Cotters. Salem Fielder's choice out at the plate. Williams strikes out, but the Cotters get two in the first. Here we go. Three-run homer, Sam Holvey, 5 nothing. big Cotters. Mike Farmer base hit, he's two for two. Here comes the offense, man. Rydell has a big lead to work with. RBI double, Andrew Tyson. 6 nothing. Cotters. Rydell cruising up until Hira takes him yard. What an outing so far for Rydell. I did not mean to enter the game. Joel Salen, big time bomb, 7-1 Cotters. Two run homer, Andrew Tyson, 9-1. Cotters are gonna get a nice cushion on the division after this one. Rydell has some leash now, or not. Gives up a sixth inning grand slam to cut the fucking lead in half. Jesus Christ, Rydell. Let's give Michael Handel the baseball. Wow, his second half sucked. Jesus, his numbers suck now. 9-5 Cotters. Two-run triple. Brady Lang gets two of the four right back. Harper Jr. time. 1-2-3 inning. Two-run homer. Joel Zalen, 13-5. Solo homer. Troy Williams, 14 runs for the Cotters. 15 runs for the Cotters. Matt Welsh is going to make an appearance here in this ball game in the ninth inning. Matt Welsh with a 10-run lead. Don't blow this, Matt. And he gets the scoreless inning. 15-5 final, Potters. Magic number is one. Magic number is one. 18 hits here at home. Tyson, four for four, homer, triple, double. That means he hit for the cycle. Tyson hit for the cycle, and I didn't even realize it. Salem with two homers. Lang with a triple. What a performance by the Cotter offense. And they can clinch the division with a win with their ace on the mound, but he's facing the Brewers' ace as well, Brandon Woodruff. Corbin Burns signed with some other team in free agency like two years ago, so Woodruff is their ace. And let's see what happened to those other two wild card teams. Who are we tied with, the Braves? How'd the Braves play? They beat the Nationals, which we couldn't fucking do. So they remain in that second wild card spot tied with us. And so, yes, Giants are eliminated now. All right, all you got to do is win one of these next two, and you win the Denel Central once again. Let's do it. 15-3 and three on the year for Woodruff, even though wins are Mickey. That's still kind of impressive. We don't care. He sucks. Didn't even realize the Dodgers were a wild card team. I'll go back and check that out in a minute. But let's clinch a division here at Crosley Field. Why am I wearing 26? I change numbers every five seconds in this fucking simulation. One, two, three, first inning. Tyson, base hit, stolen base, get him home. They don't. Pitcher's duel so far. And Brady Lang takes Woodruff yard, 1-0 Cotters in the third. Kyle Tucker takes me yard, 1-1 one, one in the fourth. Low double. Base hit fucking Yu Chang, who hit the grand slam yesterday. 
Brewers lead. Woodruff is cruising other than the one homer. Triple for Williams. If Kennedy doesn't score him here, we're going to have some fucking problems. He does. RBI double. Tie game. Can't do anything more. Tossed through six innings. Can he get through a seventh? Two-out double by MJ Melendez. Robles flies out. 7-2 run innings. Offense time. They back-to-back -back walks for Tyson. Ground out. In comes Ben Keefe, regular season merchant. Hopefully he doesn't choke. He doesn't. Cotters don't do much. And we'll just leave Keefe out there. Never mind. He's coming out. Who do we go to? Who do we go to? I mean, what are we waiting for? Let's get the closer in the game. Kieran Tawari. Ground out. Fly out. Strike out. Great work. Let's walk off the division title. No. We head to the 10th inning. I'll hop in for the bottom of the 10th. Let's keep Tawari out there to try to get three more outs. Melendez, or Robles, I mean, pops up. Black flies out. Tucker strikes out. Cotters have a runner in scoring position for the division. Jordan Elliott will pinch run for him. And we are hopping in. All it takes is a single, and the Cotters win the central. Troy Williams will step up. One for two with a triple. Here we go. Pitch. We're going to miss. Felix Pena, the pitcher for the Brewers, are warming up Ashby and Littell in the pen, lefty and a righty. Pena's on his 26th pitch. We try to pick off Elliott at second. He's not fooled. Walk this off, Troy. They're stealing, and it works. Elliott steals third, and now... If the Cotters can't score him now, they may as well just skip the playoffs altogether because that would be pathetic as fuck. All you need is a fly ball to the outfield. Well, I don't know why you're stealing there, especially with nobody out and the Brewers having not scored. But, hey, it worked out. Filed off the changeup. It stays 0-2. The pitch... On the ground, and the Cotters have won the NL Central. Big Cotters clinch the division. They're headed to the playoff once again. Troy Williams up the middle. Walk off, RBI single. And we have our NL Central winner yet again. Kieran Tulare is your winning pitcher. Only five hits, but that's all they needed. Great performance by Williams today, and Lang hit that home run. And that wraps up the season. And they win game 162 for kicks. It's 93 and 69 NL Central champs, and finally a new opponent in the playoffs the Miami Marlins. This should be more interesting than playing the fucking Dodgers again. Let's go. The Dodgers are a wild card team taking on the Braves in the wild card game. Let's advance. And the Dodgers win. Of course they do. Of course they do. We couldn't escape them that easily. Let's check final season numbers. Oh, fuck. I got to fix the playoff roster again. God. Hate this game. Go fuck yourself putting these scrubs on my playoff roster. Oh, I gotta add the actual player. I do not want to release him. I accidentally clicked that.
shit. Who did I forget? Oh, Matt Welsh, of course. How do I check what the AAA record was? Seventy four and seventy six. Are you kidding me? What the fuck? How did Hunter Green perform in AAA? Let's find out. Uh, it cleared the stats. Of course it did. Anyway. Let's check the stats. Shit, I gotta uh, fix up this. Why did I put Greg Terry there? My fault. Okay. Now let's check the stats. Andrew Tyson, great year from the leadoff spot 24 stolen bases, 20 homers. 32 doubles, 7 triples, 299, 375, 487, 862 OPS, and a war of 6.9. Nice. One error out in center field. Brady Lang, 99 overall, and he played like it this year. 877 OPS, which is actually a career low for him, and it was still a really good season. 30 bombs, 98 RBIs, 29 doubles. 4.6 war. Actually, the worst year of his career. Still doesn't strike out ever. Wow, he is tough to strike out. 10 errors. Come on. Tim Wallace. Down year for him. Very down. And I mean, Jesus. That's a little concerning. Tough year for Wallace. Holvey. Phenomenal season. 308, 410, 530, 940 OPS. 5.7 war. Just an outstanding season. 38 doubles, 27 homers. Joel Salen, outstanding season. 903 OPS, 20 bombs, 32 doubles, 5 triples. Barely strike out. This team does not strike out. We had to have the least strikeouts among hitters. This team is impossible to strike out, except when we're watching and then we chase the shittiest pitches of all time. Mike Farmer, the, be the second best year of his big Cotter career is a 733 OPS. Matches his career high 347 OBP. His slugging was under 400 for the second half. It's probably not even his second best year. This is a mid-year from a mid-player who once again strikes out like a fuck ton, like the only guy in the whole lineup. 4.1 war though somehow, so overall he was productive. Pitchford, pretty dog shit. Can't lie. Troy Williams, I'll take this year, you know, below average offense, but for a catcher, you'll take that, and 17 homers is the second most, tied for the second most, and he's a gold glover on defense, or at least he won it last year, maybe not this year. Kennedy, pretty darn good DH bat, 18 homers, 19 doubles, 268, 357, 436. You live with that all day. 2.3 war from a part-time player, Coleman Hawkins. Similar year, pretty decent for a righty DH. Negative war somehow, though. He must be completely dog shit at defense being 6'10", is what it is. Jordan Elliott stole 13 bags, 43-186. You know, he's basically a pinch runner come playoff time. Theo Coley, 6 of 44, just get off our fucking team. Austin Cotter, you know. Pretty similar numbers to Troy offensively and much less at bat. So we'll see what happens in the playoffs with him. Let's check. Well, first we got to check the pitching rotation. And then the team numbers. Tosk, another huge innings year. Pretty darn consistent numbers with what it's been the last two years. 313 ERA, 111 whip, pretty good. Greg Terry, 370 ERA, 115 whip, very solid. Um... We'll take that year. Connor Rourke got that ERA under four come season end, so he had a better second half. Still would like a 
little bit better of a year. Strikes out a lot of guys, though. Uh, where the fuck is Rydell? Uh, Van Ness, another awful year. Fuck you. Jackson Rydell, we saw his numbers when he started that last game. 380 ERA, 129 whip. Very good numbers from a fifth starter. Jack Youngman, another consistent year. Maybe his career best season. 96 innings of really good work. 100 strikeouts on the nose. He is consistently really good out of the pen. Hopefully he can bring that in the playoffs. Harper Jr. have a damn year. Ron Harper. 84 innings of stellar work. 85 Ks. Gave up just 21 runs and 71 hits. Max Marcus, the left-hander, 50 innings of very solid work. You'll take that from your lefty. Get those walks down a little bit, but hey. Ben Keefe, regular season merchant, strikes again with a very good year. Will it last in the postseason? Short answer, no, it won't. Michael Handel. Yeah, you suck. Nate Reed. Yeah, you suck. Matt Welsh. Hey, man, 23 innings of this is... For a 62, okay, born in Idaho, the Idaho product. Hey, man, we live with that. And then Kieran Tawari shuts ball games down. 45 saves, 76 Ks in 59 innings. Unbelievable stuff. Tawari should win reliever of the year. If he didn't, it's a scam. So let's check league leaders. And we only had one, Connor Rourke in strikeout. So, hey, he's, his year overall wasn't great, but he gets some swings and misses. Could be valuable come playoff time. As I'll just quickly, uh, fuck. It, uh, it fucked up the league leaders by including the wild card numbers. So, never mind. Uh, awards. NL MVP, no big cotters in the top three. Rafael Devers wins it. Corbin Burns for the Padres. With his, what in the fuck is this? What in the fuck is this? What, who the fuck was voting? Did they let all the Glenn Weed stoners vote for Cy Young? What are we doing here? The whole award's Mickey Mouse if Connor Rourke is third with a 396 ERA. The strikeouts isn't the only fucking number. This year is mid. Uh, batting title, Joel Salen just missed it with his 316 average. Kieran Tawari finishes second to this mixter. What a bitch. Gallegos did not... Okay, maybe he did deserve it. Seven walks and 61 innings. Yeah, okay. Never mind. Of the year, Cardinals must have fucking hated him because this is... And he's finally a rookie. What a bum. Any Gold Glove finalist? Troy Williams second this year. He won it last year, but Kiebert Ruiz beats him out. Dade Pitchford third for left field. Surprise Tyson isn't there for center. And that is it. How about some team statistics? We got to check the double plays in a second. Wait, let me check. What the fuck? Stop putting the playoff stats. <sighs> Fuck off, game. I'll check them in the offseason. Remind me to check them after we win the World Series this year. Anyway, Cotters Marlins in the 2-3 game is coming your way. It will be Tosk Arias in game one from Miami. Marlins finish with a slightly better record by two games. They get home field. Don't matter. Cotters in three. We're back in the playoffs yet again. Tyson will turn around to the right side and get us started with a strike. 
First and second, strike. And Marlene's on top. Really? Offense going to need to come to play today. And they are not so far, safe to say. Come on, me. There we go. One hit for this fucking offense. Let's wake up. Oh, my Lord. This offense just chokes every year. Pretty good outing for me so far. O'Neill Cruz somehow on the Marlins. Six one run innings of five hit ball isn't enough for this offense. Cool, cool. What is this thing? Dude spitting Michigan pays players, man. Wake the fuck up already. You have one hit through seven innings. And now it's two nothing. And now it's three nothing. Couldn't hold him down for that long. Do I dare put Keith in? No. Harper Jr. is in the game. Your attention, please. Double play ball. Wake up. Okay. First and second, one down. Fielder's choice. Need a homer from laying here. Three run bomb right here. Brock. That's a left out. Harper gets three more outs. Gonna need a big ninth inning rally. Starting it with Wallace. Ground out. Hovey. Strikeout. Farmer. Ground out. Arias. A complete game shutout in game one. What an embarrassment. Poverty organization. I think our, our notable hitter on the line score was 0 for 2 with like a walk or something. This organization finds a way to choke every playoff. Some form or fashion, whether it's the bullpen, the rotation, and sometimes the offense, just one phase of the game just completely goes away come playoff time. Our top notable player was 0 for 2 with two walks today. Yeah, that sounds about right. Wake the fuck up, offense. Let me send this link again so we can get some more viewers. Disconnected my mic for a sec. Gonna need a big outing from Greg Terry in game two. As he'll go up against Trevor Rogers. Need to get one here in Miami. Second straight lefty we're facing. We're much better against righties. Check gold glove first base. I think a triple A player won it. I'll uh, I'll check in a minute after this game. Have to have this one, Cotters. Let's go. Ten innings without a run for the offense. Very good inning. Two-run homer, Dade Pitchford finally gets the Cotters on the board in the series. Big-time swing at bat, 2 nothing Cotters. See if Terry can settle in. He sure can. Pitchford, two for two today. Marte doubles, Franco walks. Boy, I didn't even realize how stacked this lineup is. Khalil Watson, Tell Marte, Wander Franco, O'Neal Cruz, Jazz Chisel. Wow. Base hit. Jazz Chisholm, 2-1. And a double, but thrown out at the plate. Who made the relay throw? We'll find out later. Get some runs offense. Two down. Error! Hovey reaches on an error. 3-1 Cotters. 
Terry, two strikeouts, a double to this dude. Khalil Watson flies out. First and third, nobody out. Williams, double play. Unbelievable. And Terry has reached the end of his rope. He'll come out of the game. Jack Youngman will come in. Face Chisholm, round out second and third one down. Guzman walks, they're loaded. Stevenson, strikeout huge. Fortes flies out. Youngman with some clutch pitching. Kevin Gosman out of the bullpen for the Marlins is in. What in the world? First and third one down, please score. Holby, base hit, 4-2 Cotters. Base hit, Farmer, they're loaded for Pitchford. He walks. 5-2, Joel Salen gets the right-hander. Selman comes in now. Wasn't he on the Dodgers last year? Can't avoid this guy. Base hit, 7-2, Cotters. Absolutely needed that as Youngman gets three outs. They're loaded again for Farmer. Fielder's choice out at the plate. Pitchford, two more. 9-2, Cotters. It is looking promising. Let's get Youngman another inning. Never fucking mind. He's coming out. Uh, Max Marcus. Ryan Helsley on the morning. Marcus finished the job. He can. 9-3 Potters. This series is even. Heading back to Cotterville. Should have tested Keith. That would have been a good idea. Great performance by Dade Pitchford. Five RBIs. Big time win for the Cotters. 9-3, 14 hits. Offense responded in a big time way. Lang with a nice outing as well. And Greg Terry, you know, didn't have his best stuff, but he limited damage. Five two-run innings. And the bullpen, credit to them. Jack Youngman did a nice job. Let's check the goal of the first base winner at Gold Glove. If a triple A player won it. Dustin Harris. Appeared to play 162 games in the MLB for the Marlins. Uh, I guess he, he didn't make... Dude won a Gold Glove at first and didn't make the playoff roster for the Marlins. That's quite interesting. The reason he has a triple-A uniform on is because he didn't make the playoff roster. Yet he won a gold glove. Nice roster choice, Marlon. We're not complaining over here. Your gold glove first baseman isn't on your team. Hey, we're not going to complain. Connor Rourke will get the baseball. Somehow finished third in Cy Young. And he will get the ball for this crucial game three in Cotterville. How did the fucking Marlins get Wander Franco and O'Neill Cruz? Like, what? what is the logic here in MLB show? Just have every team trade their top young prospect, future star potential player, for like a bag of Doritos in like 2023 in every simulation. I mean, it's like, it's a joke. I might fuck around and hit a homer this game. I hope you do. Need it. We need a win here. Who the fuck wears number nine as a pitcher? Connor Rourke does. Two strikeout first inning for Rourke. Tyson single then steal off Singer. And then three straight ground outs. Nice work, offense. What can Rourke do? He can give up two singles and then get out of it. Two more singles allowed, gets out of it again. Rourke working around some base runners so far. He'll have to do it again here. He does it again. Unbelievable. Get some damn runs. It is an RBI double for Salen, and then Holby got thrown out at the plate. 
but we will take it. One nothing, Cotters. Rourke wiggles around another runner in scoring position. Pitchford is on fire in the series, and the double play machine, Troy Williams, grounds into a double play. Rourke, six shutout innings, even though he has like four walks and seven hits allowed. Tip your cap, he's working around damage. <coughs> I want to take him out, though, because I don't really trust him. He's given up a lot of damage so far. Oh my goodness, the dilemma is here on whether Keefe pitches in this game. We're going to go back to Jack Youngman here after he pitched well in game one. And he gives up a homer, the first hitter he faces. Does anyone on this bullpen want to pitch well? Then he strikes out the side. Story of the bullpen, really. Tied at one in this crucial game. Two out double for Farmer. Pitchford, base hit. And the third base coach held Farmer at third for the double play machine. He'll face Robert Selman in strikeout. Jack coming out of the game. Harper Jr. entering out, coming off a great season. First and second, two down. Strikeout. Fucking go. Kennedy leadoff knock. Tyson base hit first and second. Zero, nobody out. Lang walks. They're loaded with nobody out in the bottom of the eighth here in Cotterville. We are hopping in for this one as Selman stays on the mound. And now would be the time to fulfill your promise, Tim. They're loaded. Go yard right here. One and oh. This fan base is loving it. Backdoor slider catches the zone. One one pitch. Deep drive, right field, he actually did it. If it stays fair, it didn't. Are you kidding me? 3.8 feet outside the pole. Are you kidding me? Ball two. Takes ball two. That did not just happen. I thought he had just homered. And instead it hooks foul by 3.8 fucking feet. Still got another swing though. Two and two. That ball driven to center! 427 feet to center field. Big Cotters lead it 5-1. to one. It was a no-doubter. Hooked one foul two pitches prior. This one was not hook and foul. Tim Wallace. No fucking shot to stream lag during that moment, bro. No way. Big Cotters on top 5-1, to one, and that'll do it for Selman. What a moment. This crowd is electric. 5-1 game. Ben Keith, you're getting tested in a four-run lead, not a save spot. Nice job, Keith. 5-1, Cotters take a 2-1 lead in the series. Big time win. See you back here in Cotterville tomorrow night. We'll, we'll mob the mound after taking the series in four. It'll be Jackson Rydell on the mound. What a blast by Wallace. Unbelievable. Just missed one on the 2-1 pitch. Or on the 1-1 pitch. And then two pitches later... Goes yard to dead center. Unbelievable. Harper Jr., the winning pitcher. Good work by Connor Rourke. Six shutout innings. Game four. Here we come. Ben Keefe's 
one, two, three inning is actually the most important part of the game. Dude didn't shit himself in the playoffs, although he did have a four-run lead. So not going to get too excited about it. Arias pitching for the Marlins on short rest to try to save their season. Cotter's going with a fully rested Rydell. Here we go. Back in Cottersville. Rydell on the hill for the Cotters. Two out triple given up to Patel Marte. Gets out of it. What did I just put? Tyson. Ground out, ground out, ground out. Nice work. Nice. Walk, walk. Fielder's choice. Base hit. Didn't score the run. What is the base running on this team? Base is loaded for Troy Williams. Grounds out, but the run scores. RBI ground out, Hawkins strikes out, will take the run though. one nothing. Cotters, Rydell caught stealing, Williams shows off the arm behind the dish. And Rydell settles in now. Double play ball, of course, big Cotters love those. Three straight ground outs. Can this team, like, get one in the air for once? <clears throat> Double play ball. Six shot out for Rydell. Pitching has been awesome in this series so far. Two out single for Wallace. Need some insurance though. Rydell got plenty of energy left. Stolen base for Franco. Can he work around this? Nope. O'Neill Cruz ties it. Fly out moves him to third. Get us one more out here. Walk. Strikeout, right L7, one run innings, five hit baseball, and once again the offense with a three hit clunker. But we're tied heading to the bottom of the seventh. First and second, two down for Hawkins. Base hit, Cotters lead it two to one. Selman is back in with his 32 4 ERA, and Tyson makes it four to one. Harper Jr. to the mound. Three run lead, makes it a two run lead with that. Three outs away. How about a couple more runs? Nope, Colby double play ball. Tawari in to save it. Strike out, fly out. One more for the NLCS berth. What a seventh inning for the Cotter offense. Jazz Chisholm represents the last hope for the Marlins inside 100 miles an hour from Tawari. 1 0. Crowd on their feet here in Cotterville. Strike 199. Outside, 18 1. That's not. Test bringing the tie and run to the plate. No need to do that. Just get the out here. And that one will squeak up the middle, and indeed the tying run will come to the plate. Marlin's not quite done yet. Tawari's got to make some pitches here. Can't hang one. Ronald Guzman. Chops it. Going to be a tough play for Williams. He got him. Cotters are headed to the NLCS. They win it in four. Tawari locks down the save. And the Cotters avenge last year. And flip the script. Winning in four after getting eliminated. And they do it at home. Austin Cotter and his mullet. Hugging Kyle Tost, that would never happen in person. Nice series victory responding from that game one for the Big Cotters. Wallace's grand slam was massive. 
Rydell with a gem here in game four, and I mean a gem. Nine strikeouts over seven one-run innings of work. Andrew Tyson's two-run double was the big spark in the seventh inning, and the Cotters are headed to the NLCS where they will take on the San Diego Padres. Fuck you, Dodgers. It will not be the Dodgers this time, and this series will happen tomorrow night. Thank you, big Cotter fans. Good night of baseball here. Cotters beat the Marlins in four.